Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the European Crossover Webinar. And taking a look at some of the uh, FX markets, we are still seeing the euro continue to slide. Uh, cable's down just a little bit further, but uh, euro is still pressing lower. Um, as we noted, we talked about this a little over a week ago and why we thought it would go on and slide. Um, and Aussie's relatively flat, although same thing on the on the low side. And dollar index is just a, actually we're right at that 92.68. We can press a little bit further today, but uh, we are pressing up against that resistance. We did see a decent little pullback in indices yesterday, as well as in uh, crude oil. Once it we well, I wouldn't say. Uh, once we stretch towards the close, we did see this thing pair back, but uh, we, saw, we saw a pretty good bounce uh, yesterday. Um, you can see right up here. After we had that little run, the whole thing with the Suez Canal. But we did see the market going shape, uh, fade off and it's continued to go and fade. We actually had run up into, uh, if, actually if you look here in crude oil, I was uh, talking about that with um, with Jane. Um, it was a relatively good area right there too because we actually had the uh, point of control coming in right there. Look at that 61.49. And we actually had another one just a little bit higher, but that 61.49, it looked the high for the, for the move was 61.33. It was a pretty good area actually to go on and um, you know take on a take on a short. And um, let's move this here. So you can see as we moved up into that area, we were almost just about tagged that point of control. And so you're going to go on and see some. Uh, pretty good volume, obviously, there. If we get to that point, generally, the market's not going to go all the way to that very level. So that's what I'm saying. That offered a pretty good opportunity. And then I didn't see that. But um, then subsequently, right there at that high, we had a, a nice little graystone doji. Look at that. Right there at that high, 61.33, which was only 15 cents away from that prior uh, uh, point of control. And then from there, look at this good fade. We come back to challenge and then we faded. Um, hence, uh, here we are now. Interest rates have come back a little bit. Um, we did fade off a little bit in the 10-year note, but we came back later on in the day, but that hasn't made any difference. And that we did go on and fade here in the indexes. And I think that had more to do with um, had more to go on and do with um, in the dailies. Uh, we're seeing some uh, liquidation. And I was, had no indicated in the chat, if we got blown this 12,900, 12, I was really going to put some pressure on it. And sure enough, we did see that pressure going into later in the day, and it has sustained itself. We did come back into uh, Curia down here. And we talked about where this market is going to get to. And uh, we're seeing a little bit of a pullback. The market is going to remain under some pressure. And Irina said, if we can take a look at Bitcoin, uh, we can go and do that. So uh, we shared, we had looked for this move to go lower and we talked about, I shared this here yesterday. We said, look at this range that we're in. 
and we would add the extension to that if we broke lower. And that would take us just probably a hair under 49,000. And we're starting to do that. And one of the things I think I know, I said, in the, I don't know if I said, I think it's in here because I really don't talk that much about Bitcoin in the chat room. Uh, I haven't done anything like I said in Bitcoin in a while since um, I traded on the way out, but uh, actually out of here around this 47 and a half, I think it was, um, did not enjoy this uh, further move here. But um, I did say that we were looking in case we got this break. And that one of the things I had noticed is that Bitcoin ha has, has not responded well uh, lately, even with with uh, with, her, uh, with it with uh, uh, risk. And generally, uh, it would respond very well when we got a little bit of risk on. And uh, sometimes even if risk on it came off, uh, we'd still get a little bit of bounce. But right now, it just doesn't seem to have any oomph whatsoever. And I think that it's just that we run up so far, and I already detailed a couple of days ago, uh, twice at length, you know, this breakdown that we had. And um, it, I felt it opened us up for a move lower when we got this break, solid break. We came back quite a bit. We broke down again, and then, of course, this isn't like if it's a 15-minute or 30-minute chart. It's a two-hour chart. Kind of run out of gas here and have this little little small little grace jump doji. We dip back, and we come back again. And but, but when we come back again, we end up posting, you know, almost like the wick's not long enough for shooting start, but this is a bit questionable because, like I said, we came up to challenge this area, and we did finish positive, but we're coming off well off our highs. So we see if further a drop that actually takes out the prior closes, we dip back and we get a hammer. But at that point, I don't think anybody's trusting it in light of the action that's transpired over here. Hence, we saw this liquidation and we're talking about this thing pulling back. I remember I talked before about this getting down to possibly like in the 53s. And sure enough, that's where we went to. And that's where I came up with this level was just going across the, you know, the, the most touches. And we saw that. But at that time, even though we bounced off of it, the damage had been done. So then at this point, we drop back down again. And we have one more rally back up here, kind of like last gasp. But at this point, I think people are looking just to, as I had said back then, you know, probably looking to go on and um, uh, kick back further as people start to find, you know, see where this market's going to go to. And then we start to slide, and boy, look at this continued rampant slide. And like I mentioned, uh, I think it was yesterday, look, we're just not responding. Even if it's risk on, like we did, we had risk on a couple of days ago, and this market just doesn't care. So I'm saying is that's why I'm thinking we're going to break lower, and then if you look at it from just a technical standpoint, we're going to look, it looks like they're trading within this range you see here. And then I extended it. Hence, at its high, came up to move down here to 49, overshoot 49. Uh, with that, we'll go on and let me see if there's any news of any worth. says the Australian and New Zealand dollars are underwater after key chart bulwarks are breached. Australian and New Zealand dollars were trying to steady on Thursday on upbeat global factor activity, help put a floor under the commodity prices, though the technical background looked bleak after breaks of multiple support levels. The Aussie was holding at 75.94, Kiwi at 69.75. The next bulwark is a 200-day moving average. The currency has been in a free fall since New Zealand announced measures to cool its red-hot housing market, which is uh, the potential to drag on the economy and lessening the pressure on early hike in rates. The downward correction continues with a possible target at 68 cents, says Emery Spitzer. Implications for the New Zealand economy for the announced housing curves are likely to be negative, taking the shine off the New Zealand economic outperformance. 
story. A reboot in oil prices helped after a ship ran aground in the Suez Canal and blocked the vital waterway. Housing plan triggered a huge rally in debt markets where investors have sharply scaled back wagers on a rate hike next year. Yields on two-year bonds have dived 14 basis points so far this week. Um, Ten-year yields have also shed 28 basis points. And it's not really saying anything other than to say we broke levels and so we're going lower. That's essentially the translation. Uh, And dollar extends for a month high against the euro as recovery outlooks diverge. The dollar hit a four month high against the euro on Thursday as the US pandemic response continued to outperform Europe, which has already been hobbled by extended lockdowns and delayed vaccine rollouts. This is what I pointed out to a week ago. And that, um, and I said that, uh, I think it's yesterday or day four on Twitter. Look, I'm not even a fan of the dollar, but the dollar is going to, I said, the dollar is going to go up on default because the euro comprises 56% of the cash dollar index and the euro is going to struggle. Now that day, the euro did finish lower, but then we came off the lows and then we rallied a little bit higher to make one more last run above 119. And then it's been the submarine honking horn since then. And so it took a little while, but I mean, it came to fruition and everybody's pointing to the same thing. And, you know, and I point out also that Lagarde, her, you know, you could tell it was just out of um, desperation stating, oh, the interest rates are overdone. They're just overdone. Whereas the difference between Powell, not that I'm a fan of his, he took on the situation head on saying, hey, it just reflects better growth. But Europe is, they're just not in the same situation as the U.S. with a, an economy that can take off. And then on top of that, then they run into the lockdown. So you look at the differentiation between the two and you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out, hey, guess what? The euro is going to diverge lower. And that's what I said. And sure enough, since then, we've diverged quite a bit. The safe haven greenback held on to most of the broad two-way advance, which has been fueled by worries ranging from Europe's COVID wave and potential tax hike uh, to the pers uh, persistent specter of inflation. That has nothing to do with this tax hike. It's, I don't even know what these clowns, I don't even know what they're talking about. Like I said, it's between, like I said, we saw that interest rates, the interest to come back in, but the damage is already done. And although the PMIs came up favorable, it's already done. They're just trying to point at the story of the day, which doesn't make a hill of beans. Uh, even Germany's reversal of call for a stricter lockdown over the Easter period did little to build confidence in the region's uh, economic outlook, instead compounding discontent with Chancellor Angela Merkel's handling of the pandemic. The weak point in Europe remains around the vaccine rollout and amid the rise uh, of the virus cases and the tightening of restrictions, which likely means mooted acceleration of Q2, which may have a pushback by a quarter. And that's what I was talking about over a week ago. The euro traded uh, near the four-month low of 1.1809, touched earlier in the Asian session. At the same time, dollars rally shows some signs of fatigue as some of its bruised rivals recovered from lows and gains in many Asian equity markets. The U.S. long-term treasury yield is lower than the previous week's level, and that is a big factor for the improvement in market sentiment, said Minori Uchida. Um, even if the yield is 1.6 or 1.7, it's not enough to put push up the dollar constantly. Um, Yellen told the Senate lawmakers she was open to buying back stock uh, and paying dividends, an updated view showing her confidence in the economy. Powell also said he thinks 2021 will be a very, very strong year in the most likely case. A day earlier, the Treasury Secretary had put investors on alert, uh, espousing tax hikes to pay for Joe Biden's uh, upgraded infrastructure and other investments. Inflation could also rear its uh, head as disruptions in the supply chain exert cost pressures for manufacturers with U.S. factory activity picking up in early March. Concerns have been magnified because the third wave of infections is being largely driven by the U.K. strain of the virus, according to Commonwealth Bank of Australia strategist Kim Monday. The risk is that there uh, is the more contagious and deadly strain of the virus elicits a strong response for the European government, which has Europe remaining locked down for longer, she wrote in a note. 
So enough of that. We're going to move in. We are starting to see the uh, NASDAQ trying to move a little bit higher now. And we kill this. The thing about this analysis, I'm just saying, like I was referencing, like these stories is quite often it's the same thing, but they got to put a new spin on it every day. It's because of this, it's because of that. No, the, the story was, as we talked about last week, that wow, it looks like we're going to see one economy going one way and the other economy going the other way, um, i.e., the dollar and the euro. Obviously, the euro makes a big uh, um percentage move in relation to the dollar. And then also there's some concerns uh, with this UK strain for other areas like I mentioned about the Australian economy. But nonetheless, um, that's what is driving the, foref uh, the forefront of this move that we're seeing. Um, and it's not going to be the story of the day. One day they said it's taxes. One day it's this. It's, it's it's not correct. Uh, we're going to move into the overall analysis. So the euro is open for a deeper test. Support on Thursday will, will be the weekly level of 1770. The market can get down to 1754. Resistance will be 1845. Now, we'll have to see whether or not we get there, but we'll go and take a look at the weekly. And... You see these clothes right here, and they're here, and here. Look how these, these all run together, you see? So right there is where, I've, and I gave it a look, and right there, you look here, it's like 1773. But if you take into consideration the uh, a couple of these uh, wicks, that pushes it down to 1770, right there. But as I mentioned, we can potentially go and move to 1754. Not saying yet that we can get there. If all the bottom of these wicks point to 1754, right there. Right there. But I'm thinking before we get there, it's right here at this weekly level, and that will put us at 1770. So we could see on a Friday, this thing really start to hit some, some I don't know who it would still be long, but they may get knocked out of their position. So that could drive us down to 17. 54, but the weekly level comes in right here at 1774. You dip a little bit lower to take in a couple of these wicks, and then that brings us down to 1770. It's probably more like 1773, but there's 1771. Um, I think we can get there. We could drive this thing into the 50s uh, before the week is out as we come into Friday. Because anybody, look how the momentum's going. So if you're long, you're on the wrong side of the boat. And so we could end up pressing lower because the market knows that people are going to have to get out of their positions and it's going to, and it's going to cause that wave for the lower. You see this happen a lot with indices, but it just happens a lot faster with them intraday. So um,
1770 and resistance will be 1845. So it doesn't mean that I think we're going to get to 1770 today, but as we move into Friday, um, there's a chance we could continue to break down. So I wouldn't want to come and say, oh, support's going to be right here at 1796 when we can just start to hit some stops going into Friday. Like I said, potentially we can get down to 1754, but for today, 1770, that's going to be a weekly level. It's so actually the weekly level comes in around 1775, 77, but adding on an extra little touch of the wick takes us down to 1770. Um, we're going to cable. The cable uh, defended the bias chart support on Wednesday. Support on Thursday will be 36.42 with resistance at 37.40. So let's get there. This held on uh, yesterday. But we're the same thing. We're fading this or dropping it. Lower move and resistance at 37.40. Aussie dollar. So the Aussie continued its dip on Wednesday. Support on Thursday will be 75.56 with resistance at 76.60. Once again, we're kind of holding up a little bit better today, but there's a potential that we can still dip as we go into Friday. Maybe some longs get flushed out or late longs, I should say. Now let's go move into the Kiwi. The Kiwi saw follow through on Wednesday. Support will remain the same at 69.46 with resistance at 70.40. So I think I didn't change anything on the Kiwi. Uh, oh, I think, let me see. okay, yeah, I dropped the, the resistance to 70.40. Okay, let's go into the dollar CAD. Now the dollar CAD has held its own, uh, held its own on Wednesday. Resistance on Thursday will remain 26.17, although support now moves up to 25.32. So we'll see how we hold out. 26.17 still, this kicks up to 25.32. Now the peso, this thing really did very well. The dollar peso rallied to 2096 just above the resistance, which is at 2091. Resistance for Thursday will be 2099 with support at 2073. We're trading a very quiet day right now. Uh, no changes for the dollar yen. We are seeing a little bit of a perk up here, but no changes whatsoever on the dollar yen. Same thing. Oh, moving towards this 9.12. That big weekly is not at 9.57. I don't know. Maybe eventually we'll hit it. As we, we're kind of holding here, they're not being able to push it lower. So, But for now, resistance 9.12. No changes. Uh, we'll move into the cash dollar index. Now, the dollar index closed higher on Wednesday in a tight session. Resistance will be 92.84 with 
but the key would be a close above 92.68. You can see right here, uh, we support at 92.17. So we'll mark those off and then we'll take a look at this. And you can see we've had this 92.68. I've been bearish a dollar for months and uh, really it's just price. And also same thing is like I, would, I said before, like if you compare to Europe was that this dollar couldn't rally even when we had hiccups in uh, indices in, in October and also in November and in January. Why I was so bearish? Cause like I said, it couldn't go up regardless. Look how that, that thing topped out and it's just been down, 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 down. People could say, Oh, we're going to rally. Oh, we're going to rally now. Oh, we're going to rally now. We're not going to. Right now, the only reason we're rallying is by default. That's it. It's by default. And it's because the euro, it, once again, comprises 56% of the cash dollar index. So by default, the dollar index is going to get pushed higher because the euro is going to be sliding for its own reasons that we just discussed. So this 92.68 is key. I said before, you know, uh, I don't consider this to really be bullish until we get two consecutive days above 92.68. Well, we're there right now. I think that we can get, we could potentially move up even to 92, as I put here, uh, 92.84, right in there. Uh, but the key thing would be, can we close above 92.68? So we may get that close tomorrow. Like I said, if the euro does its own little slide down, uh, towards that um, 1770. But for today, it's 9284. But the key will be uh, if we can close above 9268. And for this to truly be bullish, you'd have two consecutive closes above 9268. 9268. We may get that because, once again, the weakness in the euro, it's just going to, it's, you're not going to flip the switch on these lockdowns. So we may be able to get this to push, you know, even higher. But don't buy this this BS that anybody's telling you that, oh, yeah, I was telling you about that dollar bean. So they don't know a hill of beans what they're talking about. That's what I'm saying is all this stuff transpired as of stuff that you couldn't be ignored to, to as I say, two ships going in the night. U.S. economy is going one way because of the stimulus. And it was already is holding up very, very, well, very, very well. And the euro is sliding backwards and of course, the US also has those uh, interest rates going for it, which initially the dollar kind of responded, but then it didn't. But like I said, this move is more about a default move. Of course, you're seeing the Aussie pull back, the Kiwi pull back. All those are going to have their own effect to adding on to the strength of the dollar. So there, there we go. That. So ultimately, you would be looking for a rally to eventually end. I don't think it's going to end anytime soon, but, and then you'd be able to take those, those, uh, um, get short the dollar for another move lower. Uh, but for right now, you just got to let this market go, you know, go and, uh, with what it's, uh, with its primary move, which really is a matter of default. But nonetheless, as you see in the Aussie, the Antipodian currencies pull back. Um, Dollar CAD is finally, Canadian dollar is trying to finally start to lose its energy. Boy, did it have some kind of energy. And of course, the euro, like you said, uh, it's not collapsing, but it's, you know, just sliding back. So I think that should pretty much cover these dollar related pairs. So as we move in now to the cross rates, we're seeing this continued move here from, you know, what's happened with uh, the Kiwi and their whole situation, which was they're going to impose all these taxes, and that was going to weigh on this housing explosion they're seeing. Well, a lot of firms that had counted on, oh, they're going to have to raise rates. Well, they may not have to raise rates. So if that's the case, then we saw, that's why you saw this Kiwi really give up the ghost and we've come back. So um, yesterday, we had 75.62. I think this is still remains the same and 7642. So there's no changes because we're in a real, relatively tight range here. Yesterday's low was 7560. We have 75. Oh, wow. We had 7562. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's not going to change. It's going to stay the same. So it turns out to be the low yesterday. 
Uh, we'll go and move into the euro pound. Uh, a little bit of moving higher. You see, I'm seeing a battle between two. You know, the the cables had a phenomenal run, but it's kind of weakening a bit. And the euro um, is trying to hold its own. We're just trading a very, very tight range here. We had 86.58. No need to change that. 86.03 on the downside. So you can see these two days, especially they are, are so tight. They're just essentially not really going anywhere. So no change here in the euro pound. Uh, from there, we go to the euro odd. I don't think we're going to go too far out of here. Obviously, the Aussie is kind of weakening a bit. Um, I don't see anything huge uh, developing here. On the upside, we had 56.24. I still like that, 56.24. And on the downside, we had to 54.87. That might, okay, this is this key level right here. Um, I don't think that, I don't see the market going much beyond that area here. So we'll keep that in check. Onto the Euro Kiwi. Well, we know the concerns with the Kiwi. So this is very key, the 70 cents. We had um, 70.02, which I like that area. See, that's the, the pink line. That's a key weekly level. We're trading in a super tight range today. We're just absolutely dead. And on the downside, 68.57. Uh, the low for yesterday was 68.51. So we'll stay with that. You could almost probably move it even a little bit higher, but we'll, we'll leave it for right now. Especially if we see the Euro weekend as we come into Friday. Uh, on to the RCN. We had 82.38. And we got down to oh, 82.24. But look right here. You see that wick right there? That's 82.22. So, hmm. Uh, we can mark that as a very key level, kind of like the stretch. I don't think we're going there today, though, but we'll save it. I guess we can update it. At least we know what the risk is, which is 82.22, which this wasn't too far beyond that. On the upside, 83.12, and we already had that. Uh, on to the guppy. After a few days coming down here, we've stabilized a little bit. Uh, we did have 48.54 as our support. The market yesterday got as low as, oh, wow, 48.47, so pretty close. We'll keep that the same. And on the upside, 49.40. We are seeing a little bit of a rebound. and probably see a little bit of a snapback. So... We will give it to this wick here. Let's see if we can get any kind of, yeah, we do get a convergence here. See this wick here and that one? That gives you 49.63. So we'll go 49.63. And lastly, starting on, this has been pretty much dead money. We're kind of edging up to this upside. If they can push higher, we'll go with these two weeks, especially as we end the week. Let's go with right there. Oh, wow, we did make it up there, 8068. Oh, and that's what we had, 8069. Not bad. It hit it right to the pip. Actually, it looks like, let's see. It looks like it came up one pip short. Not bad. And on the downside, we had 79.40. Uh, 
Let's see these two closes. That's and that's where we came up with 7940. You see that right there? Only difference is we'll go with this one higher wick, this one. And that'll put us at 79.56. And there we go. There's the bias chart complete. And uh, Amir wanted to look at uh, platinum palladium. No changes here, Amir. I mean, it's the same thing. It's just like you're talking about some of these currencies. If the market doesn't move, the market doesn't move. We've been talking about this. I mean, we're not going anywhere. And I told you that the key thing we needed to get to, and my, that's where the market went to. We need to get to stop the bleeding. We need to go in a positive close above 1190, 1191. We even discussed this yesterday. And look what the market went to exactly 1191. And so to stop the bleeding, we need to get a positive, a daily close above 1191. And we're just not doing it. And if this market wants to test even lower, we'd have to come all the way down here. We shared that. Was it 1136? We're kind of in no man's land, which is kind of, you see how we keep finishing near the bottom? Look at that. Down, we've got a gravestone doji. We talked about this. We even referenced this about towards Bitcoin. We talked about that. You see, and you rally, then you get like almost like a gravestone doji, a little hammer, then you get another gravestone doji. This does not elicit confidence. Hence, we saw three straight days going lower. Okay, shouldn't we get a dead cat bounce? Yeah, okay. We come to 1191 and what happens? They fade it right back. Well, that's not encouraging. So you may have to definitely test these lows to see if they can get something. So on the very short-term basis, it's going to be this quick on a very short-term basis, 1153. No changes there. And on palladium. There's a weekly, we are pushing higher. The reason palladium is going higher, my guess is because of the economy strengthening. So we look at this close and that should be a resistance right there, which is 26.13, which is what that stopped the market last week because we're looking on a weekly level, stopped it right dead in the tracks at 26.13. We're a little bit higher, but we need to get, we need to get a close Above 26, um, that will come in right there. There, 26.13. So see if we, we closed right there last week, because we're looking at weekly bar. So right now we're at 26.17. They need to get a close above this week, above 26.13. Taking a look at gold, we talked about this. Gold is basically dead in the water. See that? We're just not doing so well in gold. And we talked about how Bitcoin is still its thunder. And why we were talking about potentially this market can go on and take another swoop lower. Not saying it's going to happen now, I'm just saying is that it just. When you look at this, there's nothing that excites you. And look how far we've fallen. That's the thing. You look at things in context. And we talked about that. I don't know what Mark we were just talking about a little while ago. And we were saying about, God, at least you ought to get a dead cat bounce. I think we were talking about uh, Amir's platinum. And look, I mean, you fall from, look at this. This is 1960. It went a little bit hard, but let's just say right 1960. We fell $300 to 1666 huge weekly support and this is the best we can do so I'm saying who's gonna be bullish and say wow I am so excited about gold hence we may end up slipping a little bit further doesn't mean it's gonna happen right this moment but I'm just saying we kind of have to work a little bit lower I don't see the catalyst where gold's gonna all of a sudden jump up and go anywhere 
And we already talked about um, crude. And once again, that's why I decided to look at these profiles. They'll really help you out. Which, if you look back here, not only was this uh, point of control at 61.48, but look, the value area was right there at 61.35. And the high for the move was 61.33. So you had this confluence here. And that's where we're running out of gas. I haven't traded crude in months, and I was going to take a short. I probably got a little bit too greedy because I, I wanted to take a short at 61.48, but I didn't even realize the confluence of also the value area low here at 61.35. The high for this move was 61.33. It was only off by two cents and only 15 cents away from the point of control here. You can also use this for gold and bonds and even FX. But what you do is the regular trading hours are going to be the pit session in the U.S., even though there really isn't a pit anymore. So if it was currencies, you would be looking at, at 8.20 a.m. Eastern time, and then you'd measure the first 30 seconds. If you're looking at the opening range move, but then, of course, this I go with the actual uh, regular trading hours here for these as opposed to just letting it run for 24 hours. Anyway, that's all that we have. Thanks for joining us here in the European Crossover Webinar, and um, we'll see you in the chat room.